kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this unit, we are going to learn about naming chemical compounds. And we are going to actually begin first with ionic compounds. So let's find out what are ionic compounds and how they are formed. If you remember, ionic compounds are formed because of ionic bonding. And ionic bonding is between cations and anions. Do you remember the charge on cations? Cations are positive charge and anions are negative charge. So, how are cations formed? Cations are formed when electrons are lost. Electrons are gone and they take away the negative charge with them. That leaves the positive charge on cations. And anions will be formed in exactly reverse order. That will be because of gain of electrons. Think about electrons bringing the baggage of negative charge and the ion will get a negative charge. So, an ionic bond is formed due to transfer or exchange of electrons. And metals are always going to be losers. They will be losing electrons. So, metals will be forming positive cations. So, which are the anions? Those are non-metals and they are the winners in the game. That gives them the charge negative. So, here is an example shown. There is sodium and this is chlorine atom. So, if sodium loses one electron and transfers to chlorine, they have their octet complete and we get sodium positive cation and chlorine negative anion and we get a bond which is sodium chloride. So here we are, we can actually find out the charges of elements by just finding out locating the element in periodic table. So the vertical columns are called as groups and here are the group numbers right from 1, 2, 3, 2, we get to group 18 and now let's see what happens. Group 1 tends to lose one electron because everybody wants to become a noble gas. So group 1 tries to lose one electron and therefore it gets positive 1. Same thing with group 2. It tries to lose two electrons and gets a charge of positive 2. Now we are not going to consider right now the charges on group 3 to 12 which are D block elements. We'll talk about that later on. So when we go to group number 13, same story, it will try to lose only three electrons. Remember, S and P are the only electrons which are valence electron. So, element will try to lose or gain only in S and P subshells. So, the group number 13 will have charge of positive 3. Group 14 can have actually different charges. It can lose two electrons or it can lose four electrons and if it does that, it gets a charge of positive two or positive four. It can also walk further to turn into a noble gas. In doing that, it's going to have negative four charge. Group 15 elements will try to gain three electrons and turn into noble gas. But there are some group 15 elements which are either metalloids or which fall into metal category and they will tend to lose either 3 or 5. If they do that, the charge will be positive 3 or positive 5. Group 16 is going to walk further and is going to gain 2 electrons. So that will be negative 2 charge. Group 17 will be negative 1. I think you got it. And group 18 are the happiest people, happiest element. So they will not gain or lose the electrons in normal condition. So the charge will be 0 on them. So let's have a picture in this table form. Group 1 are metals. They lose electrons. One electron. So charge is positive 1. Group 2 losing 2 electrons. Charge is positive 2. Group 13 is losing 3 electrons, so it will be positive 3. Group 14 could be non-metal or metals depending upon which side of the zigzag line they are on. So if it's gaining 4 electrons, it's going to be negative 4. If it loses, it can lose 2 or it can also lose 4. So based upon that, it will be positive 2 or positive 
4. Then we get group 15, same situation. If it's a non-metal, it's going to gain 3 electrons. The charge will be negative 3. If it's a metal, it's going to lose either 3 or 5. So charge will be positive 3 and positive 5. Group 16 will always gain 2 electrons and therefore it will be negative 2. And group 17 will be only gaining 1 electron to get to the noble gas world. So it will be negative 1 as the charge. It is that simple. Now we did not discuss group number 3 to group number 12. These are D block elements or we call them as transition elements. And these are little weirdo elements. So these are the ones which always show variable charge. The charge may not be fixed for all of them. Now there are some elements which we expect you to memorize the charges for. And those are silver. Silver has positive charge. Zinc is always positive too. And cadmium is positive too. So if you are able to figure out the charges on cations and anions, it is very simple how to write the formula for ionic compound and how to name an ionic compound. So let's talk about that in our next videos. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in next video. Bye-bye.